Hi everyone, my name is Yonit and I'm a bass teacher at LessonFace.com And today I'm going to show you two exercises that are going to help you achieve full mastery over the bass neck. First of all, let me show you it's not going to help you achieve full mastery over the bass neck. C, C sharp, double flat E, E flat, F flat. <laughs> well, this exercise is not going to help you get to know your bass neck better, and I'll tell you why. If you ever had to memorize a poem that, let's say, has 20 lines, you will never try to memorize that poem and all those 20 lines together. Right? You would try to do two lines at a time, which breaks it down and makes it way easier. So this is kind of the way I'm approaching this right now. So let's start with something pretty simple. So everything on the bass pretty much relies on shapes. We love shapes. Shapes make it easier to play on the bass. So we definitely want to use them, and we can actually use them to get to know our neck better as well. The first chord shape I'm going to use, the first arpeggio we're going to use, is a major 7. So let's take it from G. So we have the root note played with our second finger. That's very important. Got to stick to the fingering that I'm giving you here. Then we have the third, the major third with the first finger, the perfect fifth with our pinky, and we have the major seven played with our third finger. And of course, we can find the octave right after. Okay, so again, we have one, three, five, seven, and one. Now it's very important that we keep the fingering this way because this is going to help you gain more control as we keep on going. The next shape I'm going to show you is a minor seven shape. So we'll start playing it from the A. Now you'll see that I'm starting with my first finger, not the second. Again, very important for the shape because this is a minor and the, most of the minor shapes will, will start with our first finger. So we start with first finger playing the root note, then flat third with our pinky, okay, or fourth finger. Then we have the perfect fifth with our third finger, and then flat seven with the first finger again, going to the octave. Okay, now both shapes, you can stop the video for a second and practice it going up. And going down, same thing for the minor, going up. How is this going to play in our exercise? A lot of people are very familiar with this side of the bass. What we do want to get more familiar with is this side of the, of the bass, of, of the neck. This is what I call the gray zone because not a lot of people play here. You get to know these notes very well because you use them often. And you get to know these notes from up here very well because, well, it's basically the same as this. But nobody really knows what happens in the gray zone. We can use these shapes basically anytime we want as long as we know our root notes and where our root notes are, right? So for example, let's say I'm playing that G major 7. Now what I want to do is look for where's another G that I can use here that has at least three notes below that I can use for the shape. So because I know my, my neck right now and because maybe I did the search, you can go D, E, F, A, I found that G. Now you can play the G over here. So here's the way to practice this with the exercise. I want you to choose three random chords, okay, whatever comes up to your mind. So let's say for this example I'm going to use G major 7, I'm going to use D minor 7, and then let's say I'm going to use um, C sharp major 7, okay? So again, what you want to do is choose your own chords, then I know, okay, I can start G over here, then I can start with G over here. Then let's say I have D minor, so I'm going to start with D over here and I'm going to start with D over here. Notice that also with the minors I go with my first finger. It's very important because it's going to be harder down the road when we play it with a metronome. Then I'm going to go to C sharp, right? So I have C sharp over here. I'm going to start this with the second finger. And then again, I can go to some place. It doesn't have to be another octave. It could be the same octave as played in a different place, right? So I can choose 
this one as well. Okay, once you have your three chords, and you can change those chords every time, I recommend doing it every time you practice, then you go to the metronome, you put whatever tempo is good for you, but make sure that you play it with a metronome because that's gonna add that little stress element of I gotta play it on time. So count yourself a bar. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play all the three chords to the metronome. Okay, so we'll start with G. One, two, three, four. One bar and then go to the next shape. Now we're going to go to minor. Check it out. I'm going to come with the first finger. Now the second position. Okay, so that was the first exercise. Now make sure that you practice this, let's say five minutes a day or five minutes every time that you practice and you'll see progress once you start recognizing more of these root notes. But if you already have done that and you want to go a little deeper and actually have some more fun and maybe bass solo, here's a really cool exercise that you can use as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play over the G blues. Okay, 12 bar G blues. Now a lot of times I see my students start playing and what they would use usually would be the blues scale, right? Which is a pretty cool scale. If you don't know this, let's introduce it really fast. So we have the one, the flat three, four, sharp four, five, got the flat seven, and the eight, which is the root note again, right? A lot of times I'll have my student play and they would always go back to that root note, which, which sounds kind of weird when you're improvising because it just kind of gets you stuck there, right? So. Like there's a lot of good stuff coming out from those shapes, but once we're locked into one shape, it makes our solo and our creative outlet a little bit limited. Here's what we can do to try to make it a little bit brighter. So this is gonna take a little bit more time and preparation, but you see that it's gonna be worth it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dive into the shape and see what notes I have there. So in this case, again, we're playing the G blues. So I have G as the root note, then I have the flat three, that's the B flat. We'll go to C, we have C sharp or D flat, whatever you wanna call it and D. Then we go to the F and the G. I'm actually going to start playing this uh, blue scale, but not from the one. I'm going to start playing it from the three. So the default kind of home I want to keep on going back to is the flat three, not the one. So I can start with playing that B flat, play that C. Then I'm going to do a little cool slide over here because I don't want to break the shape too much. So I'm going to slide from C sharp to D you don't want to land on that C sharp too hard anyway. So we have again B flat C, C sharp D, F, G, B flat. And then if we want to keep on going, we can go to C and D. Which already sounds a little bit different than use the B flat and C on the, on the G string as well just to really take advantage of the whole space here and then I'll go up you hear that just because the order is different it's already changing the sound and the way I'm approaching it right now we don't have to stop here we can even go a little bit higher but maybe I want to start with the four Right? Now the 4 is a little bit tricky, you don't want to land on it too much, but it definitely gives a little bit uh, of a different vibe to it. So I'll start from the C. So what notes do we have? We have the D after, right? And then we keep on going, we play the F, the G. We'll keep on going into the B flat. 
going to the C. We have the D and F. All right, so I already have a lot more space to express uh, the lines that I want to express in my solo. Don't try to do them all at once. What I recommend is you take each shape at a time and go through it with a play along. Practice it, see what kind of unique lines come out, really make sure that the shape actually is, is solid in your hands because there's just a lot of physical memory of your hand doing those kind of shapes. Play that one shape at a time, really get to know the sound, have your ear get used to it, and then you can really jam on the whole thing with all the shapes. Okay, so I'm going to start playing with the basic shape. It's very useful. You'll see that in time, you kind of run out of ideas. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you need any more help and if you want to take your bass playing to the next level, feel free to reach out at lessonface.com and book a lesson with me. And happy playing!